Good morning, guys. Uh, welcome back to the Emporium this morning. Uh, today is a do uh, no, not a Dollar Tree. <laughs> I said that so often. Um, today is a review uh, for Wild Eye. Uh, I'll, we'll call this uh, Wild Eye Wednesday review. I missed it by a day. Uh, I was really busy to do it yesterday, but here's what I reviewed last night. It's the sequel to High Eight. Uh, Horror Independent Eight was the original movie. This is uh, High Death. Uh, terror comes into focus. Uh, this one was unrated. Um, this could have very easily fell into the raw and extreme line at times. Some of the things they did in here, I think. Uh, would have been, you know, wouldn't have been, uh, you know, wouldn't have been unexpected if it would have had that uh, tag. Um, it was selected uh, at four film festivals here. Uh, Parasimedia, or Paracinema, I should say, Paracinema, Slash and Bash uh, Film Festival, official selection at Weekend of uh, Fear International Film Festival, uh, official selection of the Fright Nights International Film Festival. Uh, Nightmare on Film Street uh, says it's uh, anthology fans will rejoice. And Horror Society says the uh, High 8 sequel packs an even bigger punch. Uh, come to, uh, with special features, a commentary track with Brad Sykes, Josephina Sykes, commentary track with all five directors and, and cast and crew, Anatomy of a Scream, uh, in the making of documentary. It has a scene selection, trailer, and teasers. Um, this came out in 2018. It currently gets a 4.5 uh, out of 10 on IMDb. Uh, 2.7 out of 5 on Amazon Prime. Uh, clock's in at about an hour and 42 minutes. But it's understandable being an anthology. Because... Usually anthologies are a little longer because they got to get their, you know, their point across. And, you know, they have so many stories in them and they try to, you know, even them out somewhat. Although some of these I felt like were shorter than others. Uh, come out on March 3rd of 2018. Um, the production company was Nightfall Pictures. Uh, apparently upon its release, it had a limited edition VHS that was available. I don't know if you can still get that on e eBay or any place like that but the main distributor of this is well, obviously Wild Eye Releasing um, it was directed by Todd uh, Sheets, Brad Sykes, Tim Ritter, Amanda Payton, Anthony Cantonese um, music was composed by Terry Hood, uh, Dario For For Formica uh, most of the filming locations, or nearly all the filming locations, were done in and around Hollywood, California. Uh, it stars Delyn Fawn Harvey, who I've done a review for, I believe, in Clown NATO. Uh, understandable, because one of the directors in here and, and writer or producer was also uh, wrote a sketch in this uh, anthology. Uh, um, Fabiana Formica, or For Formica. Kate Doroucher, Renee Galarza, and Todd Martin were the main actors in this. Uh, I noticed right off the bat in one of the, I think it was the opening um, anthology part, the fir first thing I noticed, one of the actresses in the movie was um, an actress that had played in another one too. So they used a lot of actors and actresses from past movies in this too uh she was one of the girl the uh kind of like the punkish rock looking girl who played in um girls just want to have blood she had a small part in this she uh played the girlfriend of a look like a drug dealer or whatever he whatever his you know whatever he was doing in this film but it was so short that first opening sequence of the anthology but uh, I noticed that right off. Uh, the very first one that starts off uh, very very much has that 80s synth track that's going for it. I really like this, the music in that one a lot. Uh, but it starts off with these two women that are taking a terror tour behind the, uh, like, down under the underbelly of Hollywood. Uh, they're watching it on the cell phone. These, uh, they look like more like videos, but they keep calling them movies. 
And I, I kept thinking they were going in the movies and they were coming back out, but I didn't really, I didn't get that's what they were doing. It just looked like they were walking around checking out, you know, like the Walk of Fame and that kind of thing. And they kept watching these videos. Uh, but the first story uh, starts off with a girl who takes uh, too many drugs and encounters uh, death himself. Uh, he just keeps saying it never, it never gets old and... And he just, he took, basically he takes their souls and then goes on to the next person. It it was very brief. It was hard to really get into that one. I didn't dislike that one, but I just thought it was, it could have been a little longer uh, before I know it was done. Uh, and then, ep um, we'll call it episode two of this. Uh, it's about a guy na uh, known as the Switchblade Bandit. He prides himself on collecting seri serial killer memorabilia. And ends up getting a little too close to being part of someone else's new collection. So, it's, it's, uh, that one was, I like that one a little better. Um, I don't know, I, I, I don't know, something about that one would click with me a little more than the first one. I'm not really big on the, you know, the drug. I don't, I don't, I don't really like drugs in movies. I just, I'm not much of a drug, you know, person per se. And I, I don't know, I never... Never really was a drug uh, person ever, and I'm, you know, I'm straight edge, so I didn't really like that one too well uh, in terms of the whole, you know, series of these. Uh, and then third, this was my favorite one. Uh, a guy works at a video store called Fantastic Flicks uh, during the night shift, all alone. Uh, and there's a drop box that you can drop movies in, and somebody drops a uh, really... Uh, like sick looking uh, DVD or Blu-ray in the Dropbox and he goes to get it and is playing all these weird images and stuff. And like somebody said, I want to say somebody said that this one felt very much like the grudge in a video store or the ring, one of the two. Very much felt like a uh, the ring or the grudge and overall tone. But somebody said, too, it kind of felt like an urban legend one as well, and I got that as well. Uh, nice little nod. I don't know if it was done to Friday the 13th uh, Part uh, 6, but the main ghost bends him over backwards, and his legs are like... It kind of reminded me of the sheriff in Part 6 when Jason takes him uh, and bends him back, and, his, and he's just like squirming, and his legs are like up by his head. That I really that really uh, made me think of that movie, but like I said, this really gave me the '80s and '90s video store vibe. I really love this one. It clicked. This is like I said, this is my favorite one of the bunch. Uh, and then um, the fourth one, an actress who gets more than she bargains for when she attends a strange audition, where she ends up being a shoe in for the closest mental institution, because <laughs> she I don't know. It's just You'll have to see for yourself. I don't like to tell too much about these anthology ones, but because uh, they're so short, you're practically telling people word for word what's going on. Um, the anthology ones I'm going to kind of like cut back on a little bit. But uh, that one was really uh, started off uh, kind of creepy, you know, kind of typical, but then got creepy as it went on a little. But it, it, was, it was all right, but I... I, I like my favorite ones favorite one was the fifth, third third and fifth one the fifth one had a painter who draws with his own blood to survive uh, when he made a pact with uh, what is called as a demon which is called the muse and it says if he provides victims for the muse um, and and the dark elder to, to help the elder gods will take over all of humanity and recreate it in their own image which is very, at the end of that one, it's very uh, Godzilla-like or Cloverfield-like with the giant, uh, oh, like, H.P. Lovecraft kind of inspired giant uh, creature at the end, that, or on the fifth one that pops up by the end. Um, I did notice, too, uh, there's an Easter egg at the end of the DVD, and uh, it showed... Uh, a guy, an older lady and an older guy, uh, 
grabbing a pamphlet for the tour, and they kind of hinted at like they were they were going to be the next ones to take the tour, or, uh, continue the you know continue on for possibly a third movie, and maybe someone else will you know maybe maybe not those two because sometimes that happens. That happened in the movie Dolls. Uh, they never really had a sequel to that, and they kind of hinted at a sequel with a couple pulling up and having car trouble. Uh, it could end that way. I have no idea, but it is a part two, so likely a part three is on the way. But it did hint at a sequel when they did that. Um, the first uh, segment was called Death Has a Conscience. Uh, second one was Dealers of Death. Uh, back to the Death Has a Conscience. It was uh, Anthony Cantonese who directed Soto Maniac and uh, Girls Just Want to Have Blood or AKA Teenage Blood Sucking Bimbos. That was uh, the guy who, uh, director who did the first segment. Segment two, Dealers of Death, Tim Ritter uh, has credits that stretch back to the 80s. Uh, director number three for Night Drop, my favorite one, was by was done by Amanda Payton, who produced Clown Nato. Um, and fourth um, segment was done by Cold, uh, or was called Cold Reed, and was done by Brad Sykes, who direct uh, who directed that one. But he was the writer on the two thousand eight movie uh, Plaguers. And the fifth one, called The Muse, was a nod to H.P. Lovecraft. And Todd Sheets, was, who was the director of Clownado, also directed this one. But you can technically count there are six stories in this one. Because um, the five that they uh, did on screen, they had a, a wrap around, which was really... Some people I've seen said it isn't very well done. I, I disagree. I kind of liked it. I kind of dug what they did with it. Uh... But another interesting note about The Muse, the fifth segment in the anthology, the budget for the segment, uh, The Muse, was approximately done for 90 bucks. I, I found that on IMDb. Pretty interesting fact there. I liked a lot of the creatures that they did in this. Uh, it had really good special effects. Uh, and then I did uh, see something online, so I had to save this because I had to let you know that According to the closing credits, production of each short film came with a set of rules. All the shorts must be shot in HD, handheld or tripod only. No CGI, visual effects, green screen or any kind of any kind are allowed. Uh, and other rules were applied. Uh, right now, this movie, um, High uh, Death, sequel to High Eight, uh, it's currently available on Amazon Prime. Uh, you can rent it for $3.99, also here on YouTube, and Google Play for uh, the same price. And that pretty much wraps up my review. I had a lot of fun with this one. I honestly think, in some regard, it had better stories than High 8. But there were some High 8 ones that I liked better than High Death. But I thought, overall, this one was put together a little better than... That one, I think there was, like, maybe a little too much going on in that one. Like, I think it had a lot more stories, if I remember correctly. Uh, this one is a little bit more focused. Uh, that's my opinion on it. I, I don't think it's, like, loads better. I think it's slightly better. But I did like this one, and that's my review for High Death. And I'm going to show you one more look at the front. Uh, you can also get this on the Wild Eye releasing site physically, or I'm sure you can pick it up on eBay or Amazon as well physically if you don't want to stream it. Look at the back. They do a really good job with their packaging, and that's how I'm going to close out this video. That's High Death this morning. Really good movie. Uh, thank you, Wild Eye, for another opportunity, and uh, happy uh, Wild Eye Wednesday. Although it'd be a bit late for it. But this will be my uh, Wild Eye Wednesday for uh, Team Wild Eye. So take care and stay safe everybody. And please share, like, and subscribe if you choose to do so. Thank you and uh, have a good day everybody.